as we conclude our day, I've been thinking about this one because I'm trying to find the right words. <laughs> True connections. They will happen with people who are their true self. And so they have an open heart. Okay. Uh, they are those who love to love. They love to live and they love to laugh. And so they are both the lover and the beloved of themselves and then also of other. That's because they know how to attune, regulate, and be accountable. And so if they have any kind of stuff, borderline narcissism, they're working with a good therapist like a Dr. Daniel Fox. And they present to a person, here's what we are working with. They know though how to work with their emotional buttons, their emotional triggers to be communicators, okay? Just so we're clear before we move on, if we have a person who has the basic attachment um, wounds or ruptures, that's even more great, meaning it's straightforward because for borderline narcissism, we have a lot more that we are working with due to there being a lot more pain and um, suffering that has taken place. So it just requires a bit more of wiggle room for people to work with that one. And so that's a side note. We can chit chat about those in the future, but for now, as I break it down, so if there's non-secure attachment or disorganized, okay, even though disorganized, we're already leading ourselves to potentially dealing with dissociative identity disorder or dissociative disorders. So even here, but if they're working with a good therapist and they're meaning on their work, okay, so they're wanting to become their lover and beloved to get completely into knowing self attuning, self soothing and self regulating. They want to be healthy other and they want, okay. So that's where we're going to be working together as people. And then for the childhood trauma, it's a straightforward one for low self-esteem and dark communication. And that's because we have Patrick Tian, for example, great childhood trauma survivor, healed and healing therapist who shares how not to project and how you can go work with him in the community. And he has a lot of proactive tips immediately like Dr. Daniel Fox. Okay. So with that, we then have those of us who are healthy others. We know non-reactivity. We know self-regulation, accountability. That's because we didn't lose our sense of self. We own it. Okay. So with all that being said, you can only be a true self when you own, observe, witness, narrate. Thank you, Dr. Daniel Siegel. Your sense of self, your soul of self, your core, your narrative, your relational. There's no shame, blame, fault, revenge. None of the low self-esteem stuff. There's no unkind business. There's if my behavior maladaptive comes up or my adaptive child, I'm aware of it because I've been working really well with my good therapist and I'm not going to have partner or partners as my therapists are working my stuff, putting up with my shit. No, this is where we regulate and become grown ups and emotionally, mentally, and physically mature together. Okay. So you love to love, live and laugh. No laundry. The laundry is for the Zen master. Okay. So with that, let me read to you and then we'll talk a little bit more. The lover and the beloved. When you move beyond consciousness, you caress the beloved. When you move into the unknown beyond everything, the beloved caresses you. It is not enough to love me. I want you to allow me to love you. It is not enough to desire me, to want to be closer to me. I want to reach out to you and grab a hold of you, drawing you into me and never letting you be apart from me again. There is so much more for us to experience, you and me, than simply gazing, even with love, at each other from a distance. Let me take you into my arms. Let me hold you until we cease to know or care where you and I once were, you and I, for instead we will be one. Will you allow it? Will you allow me? Will you allow us to be? Question mark. Oh, sweet beloved, the divine, the great beloved has a passionate desire for you to love you, to touch you, to make the divine presence known to you so that you will cease to fear the darkness, take delight in all of life and become mesmerized by the beauty of love in its endless emanations. When you are able to take delight in allowing yourself to receive life and love and to receive all that you can be, this is me continuing, 
then you will know, faith or not, that self-discovery with self-worth enlightenment. So when you have people who know how to live spirituality or mindfully, you will have people who take the human gift and unlike that Zen master of suffering, they are able to move beyond death and life in the secondary consciousness to connect with that which is the infinite unknown, unexpected, unwanted, with an open heart while going with the flow. So integration of the brain is what we're talking about. And them having curiosity, open, accepting, and loving hearts. So being in the present and the now, which is why they're living mindfulness day to day. And then with you, they're creating more of that grace, the restorative embodiment self. So they up and rise with love in the morning, not with the downers, okay? So they know how to use clarity. They know how to use thoughts. They know how to have magic work through them. They want to live with a mind that thinks of self-worth, that knows healthy boundaries, are expanding conversations, okay? So differentiated self, and that's why they have fun thinking and they have fun playing. Life doesn't weigh them down. That's what we are here at 5D, if you will, here at IHP, and when you are able to be yourself as a true connection. Because we're not looking for you to be my safe haven, secure base. I can regulate my nervous system and that's where I can also maintain my own opinions, emotions, and thoughts and express them to you when you're having fun with me. Instead of, excuse me, excuse me, you're confusing sciences and spirituality. Okay, so when we have people who are not whole selves and that are facades, that's a whole different story. But if I were to ask you, after having read this, right, the lover and uh, this beloved, if I were to ask you, who would you want to be on an island with? that you could use the words I read to you and imagine it's going to be the people who have you living and laughing. They don't have to have any kind of physical touch. They will have you living and laughing from here, but it has to be mutual. And what I mean by that is uh, we will have to share interests and or um, outlooks. We need to know how to joke. So for example, I can joke about life and death with people because I'm not somebody who's weighed down by it. Even if I have the panic attacks, it's for a different reason that those things come up. But even when that's happening, I'm still able to laugh with somebody about it. What is nice is when you're with people who have the capacity to regulate their nervous system and then to be compassionate in the moment. And so that means that they're not going to minimize it or say, oh, don't have one. Don't be afraid. Don't. That's not what a person needs when they're having a moment. They will need somebody who knows how to be in their prefrontal. I have those people. So they're not thinking it's good, it's bad. They're simply there. Their body is there with you. And that body is in a ventral vagal state because they have the capacity to be in a physiological state of ease because they're not judging the panic attack and they're not judging you for having one because they're not thinking, why does she have panic attacks? Her life's so lucky. What's up with that? You know what? Maybe she does too. So whenever somebody's got their little ego working, Someone that's intuitive is going to perceive it. And really anybody, even if they're not intuitive, they just won't know how to put it into words, but they're going to know where they felt more comfortable versus where they didn't. And they're going to navigate to that which made them feel more comfortable because your body is the intelligence. And it wants to be soothed because that is your human birthright and nature is to not be in a sympathetic, but to be in a ventral bagel. The only time it won't want that, and that's why we have fancy man and woman in suits, is when you're denying your three-year-old and your one-year-old the capacity to be safe because, as our lovely therapists point out, the unfortunate business, individuals who have histories of childhood abandonment tend toward more hyperarousal responses because the central issue with the history of abandonment is the separation anxiety and really terror of abandonment that results, Janina Fisher, PhD. And so this is the reason why if a person is aware of what they have, they won't run away from that which makes them feel loved and safe. 
they will have identified i'm afraid of true love because i didn't get true love i didn't get a safe haven secure base household so my gut is keeping on wanting to keep me unrooted and fleeing that which is a truly safe environment because i had a diego's family another another janina fisher emotional neglect is usually the result of parents who are unavailable critical who believe the child should raise themselves traumatic neglect involves fear and threat and then we also have ebony webb psych d when i think about neglect we're talking about the neglect of not just emotions but it's a whole body holistic deprivation from malnourishment of the body impoverishment of connection and attunement and so once again if a person has the uh correct download of who they are meaning they're taking care to become their whole self they will know that what they're afraid of is that which is a healthy relationship because they didn't get one one of the most useful insights that i've ever gotten out of mindfulness practice was that in the final analysis all that i'm afraid of is sensations particularly the sensations associated with unpleasant emotions getting stuck in sadness getting stuck in fear getting stuck in anger that's from ron siegel psych d so there's a lot that goes behind a person's work to heal their self and that's why the healthy individual is here as support for others who are moving towards healthy it means they don't want to stay in what facade lady talks about they don't want to project their reactivity they want to master non-reactivity because that's you moving towards what your body has been seeking in the first place and that's also you moving into becoming an independent true lover by the way and that's uh again unconditional love so we'll be back with more but uh to conclude the true relationship is of two people who one can love live and laugh together 24 hours a day <laughs> and that share not a push-pull dynamic but one that is of vulnerability authenticity it's so amazing when you're able to pour your soul and heart out to someone and to know that they see you and then to it's not just see you you feel felt that's something you don't ever forget and you know that you could sit with them for hours and then you also know that you can intellectually so for me for example as a person of intellect it needs to be a person who has interest but they're open to all of it not humbug attitude okay so for example knowing who you are and what you cherish you don't forget that if you have healthy self-worth you present this is what i am this is what i am this is what i like this is what i don't like and you can present this isn't something i'm enjoying because i'm not able to feel comfortable so when you're a person who has the capacity to be non-reactive to be talking about yourself and to welcome differences you'll always create a true connection but it's when you have the same on the other end that you will be able to match and so if i give you feedback and you don't know how to take what is really not criticism but you might take it as criticism that's not going to work right so we have two egos that are whole and they're self not sensitive that's what is a i can love and live and laugh with you forever and ever and ever and explore all of intellectually and beyond because also we have no fear of death we are consciously aware realistically that we are mortal and we have internally secure attachment or we're getting there which is why we know that we can't say we can last forever in the sense of that living but we can say we're committed to each other and we can mean it and when you find those who are healthy self-worth they will say it and mean it and when you find somebody who says it then they don't mean it you don't make it into they're an evil son of an asshole <laughs> you allow yourself to know that there are those who don't take attachment and trauma healing seriously they got a facade man and woman who are perfect examples of people who live relationships the way they do what can i say um 
What I can say is this, you may be right, I may be crazy, but it might just be a lunatic you're looking for. So here's the lunatic. When you're able to be mindful and flawed with integrity, the way that I share with you all, you're going to know the difference between what is true love. It doesn't ever go away. You won't ever have... <laughs> a dwindling down of that which is true because it's not fake <laughs> lust like i told you i don't have experience with it to the extent of what others have shared with me and that's because i'm not into fake anything and i have my proof of where i confirmed what i already knew about maria you heard the story if you're a regular so i'm gonna let you know on uh side notes why the divine feminine of her oversoul doesn't have questions about what we feel what we think what we see we only have answers and then we know what we don't know and then we leave alone the rest but we don't lose the capacity to be grateful for every single member of our oversoul which is why when i think of how those other groups have decided to talk about the oversoul i feel bad for them um not for me but i feel bad for them because they have dehumanized the relationships that are of people that are here and and that's sad to me because when you're mindfully living and loving right now we've shared 16 17 minutes if you're still here and then if you watch the other one that's something meaningful you spent time with me i thank you for that when you're with the person who sees you and then laughs with you that's unforgettable and when they love you for who you are that's amazing and why wouldn't they but but <laughs> this is that part of where how am i going to bring it okay i'm going to do it this way so for my mono amory monogamous people when they say i could never share my person i understand what they're saying i'm gonna bring to something different because it's not about polyamory and sharing i'm trying to give you that heart feeling but also what i just finished describing to you and letting you in on knowing about yourself and others and so one i can bring it scientifically besides just the spiritual people and the mystic stuff but it's still a choice point because every person can get the capacity to learn more to become more ideal to each other you know but not in a way of changing each other however here's what if you do know who you are to a T pretty much, you're going to not have questions of who is a perfect fit for you. Monoamory, monogamous, or polyamorous. Which is also why, while Jessica Fern shares that she thinks polyamory is the way to support people to get securely attached, I beg to differ because being securely attached means you take note of learning to love yourself first so that you can be a version of yourself that is going to present consistently who you are you're choosing to take care of this uh, inner child that was yours with all the good attachment trauma okay the mystics the 5d mystics don't disregard those of us who are in the holistic practices from the 5d frequency don't disregard any of good trauma experts and we don't make it into competition and we're not replacing therapy therapy is the number one thing if i meet anyone who is not yet their whole self because they need to learn how to navigate their nervous system so that they can then put into practice mindfulness safely and that we can know if they have a moment or if they have alters what can we do so that's the part of why i collaborate with good therapists because if i need them I'm going to say, hey, I got one of my mentorees. I got one of my masterclass peeps. I got a spiritual retreat coming up. Who's available to be here in case I need you? Stuff like that. The ones who they um, make it into not a big deal, they don't understand how many people walk around with altars without 
even knowing it because they don't have access or interest in the same information that I do. And then they have shamans who say, don't go to therapy. I can heal you and da, da, da. It's no, you don't. You don't heal that shit. You don't heal behavior. The pattern of behavior comes from their childhood. You can clear, yes, their energy sphere. The way that you behave, I've seen it. This is why I'm speaking about it. I've seen people who think that they don't need to go and that they can do all other stuff. And there are the somatic therapists who say, ah, oh, their body's healing. But I noticed so many not making it all the way through because they have diminished and disregarded the opportunity to go to get good therapy. So anyways, side note, side note, I was trying to get you all just to conclude with, um, the part that when you meet a uh, true connection, it's, it's a true connection on all levels and we don't have questions. We have answers if you're a mystic. And you also do know that nothing's set in stone. You're not afraid, which is why you're also not somebody who says, I don't share. Uh, you're also not somebody who um, makes it into a done deal if things don't go exactly where you thought they would go. But you also know when there are those who are not a part of those connections anymore. So I was also trying to get to that. There are those who in the years you will notice that your energetic imprint and theirs don't have a big exchange. It's because of those, remember the light bulbs that are going out. So they're facades and they will keep on being a part of our oversoul because we are a big oversoul. And then when they have moments of um, reminiscing, they will do their little thing. And it's a little thing because it's a little game of nothing except for when people feel in a moment of, uh, as Dr. Daniel Siegel says, once you've created a safe haven, secure based connection with someone, you're always going to be that safe space for them, which is why, again, who would you want to wake up with tomorrow is my question. And you'll know who it is and you'll know it because of your amygdala. Like I know who I would choose <laughs> and I know how and why and all that, you know what I mean? So you know yourself if you know yourself. It's not based on pretend facade stories. It's going to be based on tangible aspects of your day to day. If you're healthy self-worth, which I mean, we're 22 minutes in. I'm pretty sure you are. So thank you for stopping by. I have a good one.